Hello YouTube, this is Marco. I'm your Watch Cardinal, bringing you another video here today. A collection review, the last of the collection reviews that I do have to do, and it is for a good friend, a man who I've, you know, talked to back and forth now for quite a while, and someone I believe to be a genuine watch enthusiast and collector. Uh, of course, it is our good friend, friend of the show, MS fan. Uh, of course, before we begin, a quick Wiss watch check. What am I wearing? I'm wearing the Pam, the Panerai. 183 guys i just want to thank all the new subscribers to the channel who checked out or who found my channel through the timepiece gentleman uh actual video at the end of the day guys i believe i am a genuine watch enthusiast and collector and i really just don't support the message that those guys are sending and i i want to be able to communicate that to you guys through this collection review that i want to do for my friend ms fan who i believe has a really stunning and superb collection. So he's currently 15 watches deep. Uh, and of course, I'm going to list them off for you. And uh, of course, I'm going to give you my thoughts, my opinions, and what I think he should do with the collection. So as it stands, he currently owns an AP Royal Oak 15500. Uh, that's the black dial version. Uh, listen, as people who of the channel who have watched before know, I'm not the biggest fan of the Royal Oak personally, but I do respect its place in horology, namely the fact that it's really the first luxury steel sports watch, and as a result, created a genre of watches that I would say is probably the most dominant in the market. So I do really respect the history of the design of it and its place within the world of horology. Next is a Rolex Daytona 2013 black dial, a 116520. I love those because you get to get best of both worlds. You get the kind of vintage aesthetic, but you get the modern uh, case and bracelet construction. I think personally, those are the ones to get as everybody's chasing kind of white dial and black dial ceramic Daytonas. I really think those previous model versions with the updated clasp and bracelet, those are the ones to get. And those are the ones that are going to be very collectible in the future. Next is the Rolex GMT Master 2 Pepsi and the Rolex GMT Master 2 Batgirl. Uh, again, I like to call it the Bruce Wayne. So the Batman on Jubilee is the dressed up version of the Batman. So I call it the Bruce Wayne. I think, I mean, there's not much, much to say on these watches. I think they're the best watches that Rolex makes. Nobody makes a GMT really quite like Rolex. So man, that is very impressive. Next is the Rolex Submariner Starbucks, or as some of you have called it, is the Sermon. Absolutely gorgeous. The Rolex Submariner Two-Tone Black, Rolex Submariner Ceramic, uh, of course, that's the 116610, so that has the uh, super case, and so does the Two-Tone as well, that also has the super case with the maxi dial. Next is the Rolex Explorer 1, 214270, so that's the 39 mil version. The Rolex Datejust 41, 126334. He has the Rolex Datejust 2, 2017 blue dial, Rolex Datejust 2, 2015 black dial, Tudor Black Bay 41 with a blue bezel, uh, and then Tudor Black Bay 41 blue dial. And then the last two watches he has are the Omega Speedmaster Professional and the Tag Heuer Monaco, uh, Monaco Caliber 11. So overall, that is, I mean, quite an impressive collection, extremely substantial to say the least. And uh, I must admit that, you know, I'm, I am a little bit envious and jealous looking at this collection because these are absolute steel stunners they're steel stunners so in terms of what he's looking to add uh and what he's looking to move well he's looking to actually sell off four of his watches currently and that's two of the rolex date just so the rolex date just two from 2017 in blue and the one in black as well as the tudor black the two tudors tudor black bay uh, 41 with the blue bezel and the tudor black bay 41 with the blue dial and personally i would tend to agree that those are the ones to move uh, I did kind of give you some advice, uh, I believe it was on R2 Luxury live stream, uh, saying that the, the two extra day just were a little bit redundant, and the tutors really just didn't belong in the collection. It's not to say that they're not great watches, they're just not really at the level of the rest of your collection, in my opinion. And so I would say that, you go, you know, you should really look to upgrade those pieces. So those are definitely, I think, the moves to make. So you're making all the right moves. Uh, in terms of what he's looking to add, he said he is looking to add by the end of this year, his AD told him, a Panda Dial Daytona. I mean, hey, that's a no-brainer. If you can get one at retail, why not? And he's also looking to add some OP41 and OP31 for the wife and asking my advice on which ones are my favorite. Well, personally, I think the most underappreciated one and the one I think that 
will be the most collectible long term next to the Tiffany Blue OP is the green dial. I really like the green dial. I think it will match with a lot more, you know, kind of things overall. And it's still unique and different. The yellow and the red, they're just a little bit too vibrant, a little too out there for my personal taste and style. And so I really think the green strikes a medium be between being unique and different from all your traditional and regular OPs and that it's a colored dial, but still being quite muted and easy to wear. So I think green is definitely the color to get. And of course, I would be remiss if I didn't mention a Tiffany dial OP. If you can get a Tiffany dial OP, I would suggest getting one over the long term. I think those will definitely be collectible in the future. As for the OP31s, I think the pink is kind of a no-brainer. It's very feminine. Looks great in my opinion. I really like uh, the review that Jenny L did on it. <laughs> it was uh, quite cool to see her unboxing and get it so emotional when she actually unboxed that watch. So I think that would be a great pickup. And again, if you can get a matching set as a long-term kind of kind of goal, get two Tiffany OPs, one for yourself on the 41, one for the wife, I would imagine, and the 31. I think that would be a kind of great two-piece combo because you get to share your hobby and enthusiasm with your significant other. Now, in terms of what I would get rid of and replace on top of uh, the four watches you're already getting rid of, uh, again, for the similar reasons for the Tudor and the the um, the actual Rolex Datejust, I would get rid of the Longines. It just doesn't really belong. Maybe it does hold sentimental value, but again, I mean, we're talking about a huge collection of really what can only be described as, I would say, you know, the higher end echelon of the watch industry. And, um, you know, I, I just don't think the Longines belongs, in my opinion. That's not to say it's not a great watch. I do like it. I do like the look of it. It has a classic styling, but has you know, a modern uh, kind of case size and design. Uh, so I do like it, but I just don't think it belongs in the collection. And the other one that I would look to replace or uh, maybe swap out with is your two-tone black Submariner. I would try and get a two-tone bluesy. Uh, the reason being is that it would just add a little bit of vibrancy to your collection, a little bit of pop of color. And you currently own three Submariners, all of which have black dials. I just think that's a little bit too monochromatic. So I would be looking to kind of diversify uh, your dial variation since you already have bezel variations uh, in your Submariners. This way you'll have a black bezel, blue bezel, and a green bezel, and you'll also have two black dials and a blue bezel uh, and a blue dial, which makes a, a good point of difference in your overall collection. So those are the two things that I would replace in your collection over and above the ones that you're already replacing. So that would bring your total to 14 watches. And as you can see from the box, it does fit 18 watches. So I am going to recommend to you uh, four more watches. So the first watch is actually inspired by your Tag Heuer Monaco. And, you know, the kind of inner watch snob in me almost wanted me to tell you to get rid of it. But, you know, I really like the Monaco. I think it has an extremely unique design. And I do respect its place, again, in the world of horology, it being an iconic chronograph. And so I got to thinking, and you own what I consider to be three of the most or three of, out of four of the most iconic chronographs, that being the Rolex Daytona, of course, what I believe to be the most iconic chronograph in the Omega Speedmaster, and you own the Tag Heuer Monaco. And so I thought it was only right to add a, third, a fourth chronograph, the first automatic winding chronograph, at least that was made by the Swiss, because I think Seiko beat them to the market, and that is the Zenith El Primero. And again, you seem to kind of enjoy your metal bracelet watches so you can put those zeniths on a metal bracelet but i would actually recommend one on rubber it's the open heart version it has a beautiful silver dial those two different dial uh sub dials i think would really pop and stand out in your collection and i do think it is a beautiful watch i mean the finishing is fantastic i think it's a distinct look it's not super expensive on the secondary market these can be had what for what i believe to be i mean huge horological bargains uh, so I think an open heart Zenith El Primero would really fit in nicely in this collection. That's my first kind of suggestion, just to complete the kind of sub collection within your collection of iconic chronographs. I think that would give you the four most iconic chronographs really ever made. And I think it would just really balance out uh, that chronograph or that sub collection of chronographs very well. Next would be a gold Rolex. Now you did mention to me that you are looking to add the rose gold uh, green dial anniversary day date, but those are impossible to get, uh, unfortunately, at your AD because they're so limited and exclusive. Uh, and again, I, I would obviously recommend it to you because I think it's a no-brainer. Those anniversary dials are only going to be worth, 
you know, a considerable uh, amount of money in the future, and they're going to be extremely difficult and cost prohibitive to get for that reason. But I also do think they're actually quite special. Uh, but I think there is an alternative that is quite underappreciated, and that is the rose gold silver dial. Now, I really like the traditional white, uh, yellow gold silver dial. I think that is the day date to get. But I think if you are more inclined to getting rose gold, I think a rose gold silver dial looks great. I mean, you get those Roman, those rose gold Roman numerals. Also, uh, the white dial just pops. And again, that rose gold, I think, is just such a beautiful color. I think they have one of the Rolex makes one of the nicest uh, rose gold mix of really any watch manufacturer in the industry. So I think that watch would really pop in your collection. And I think it would really satisfy uh, your kind of craving for a gold Rolex, uh, specifically a day date. And ultimately, if the, the olive dial were to present itself, I think it is a watch that you could quite easily get out of and get your money back or just about your money back uh, quite easily. So I think one to consider is a rose gold silver dial day date if you are looking to quench that kind of thirst uh, for a precious metal day date. So that is my suggestion for uh, the gold Rolex. Now, next is going to be kind of my pick. I really do feel this watch collection does, me, uh, does miss a dedicated dress watch. I think every person should have at least a watch that is a dress watch. Now, I know the Longines does fill that role, but ultimately, I feel that, you know, it, it, to me, it just, it, it doesn't really, it, it doesn't really fill that spot. It doesn't fill, uh, fulfill me. Uh, and I want you to build a collection that is a long-term collection that you will be able to appreciate because a dress watch is meant to be special. It's meant to be worn on those special occasions. And so what would I recommend? I think I would recommend something quite simple, you know, probably something in precious metal, of course, from Patek Philippe. The models that come to mind most distinctly are the 5227. Uh, again, you get a modern case shape, the Hunter case back, beautiful automatic winding rotor and finishing is spectacular. You get the Patek seal. Uh, of course, you get, as I mentioned, the 100 case back. I love the kind of distinctness of the, the case itself. It's got like this sculpted uh, case that I think is just phenomenal. So the 5227 white dial is the one I prefer. I think it's very simple, but it's beautifully made. It's, I mean, the craftsmanship on that is just superb. And I think that would be a great watch to wear, you know, not so frequently, but on special occasions and one that you will really come to appreciate. And if not the 5227, I really like as well the 6119, which is the new Calatrava that Paddock came out with. Now, if you are looking to add one of those, I would definitely recommend waiting. They're going to be really expensive if you get them at retail or if you get them on the secondary market. I would wait two or three years and you'll be able to pick those up for a significant discount, in my opinion. So those are the kind of models that I would be looking at. Of course, if you don't prefer Paddock, you can always go Longa. I think Longa 1, a Saxonia is also great. Uh, an 1815, if you want to get the up-down version, I think those are beautiful. Um, what's another one that I would recommend? If you want to go Breguet, I think Breguet makes a lot of great models. Um, you can look at their diverse range from the 7787. Uh, you can even look at the 7057 or the 7097. I think all of those are great choices. I would stick to kind of major brands like Breguet, Lange, and Paddock because... Uh, not just because the craftsmanship is great, but if you are going to spend that kind of money, you do want something that is a little bit liquid, uh, you know, because I think it is important to consider uh, within the context of a collection. So that would fill the dedicated dress watch need. And then you would need a 18 on the box, right? Because I just gave you four uh, kind of recommendation. And so I want one on the wrist, as you know, because that is the rule. If you have 18 in the box, you fill up the box. Well, you need one on the wrist to wear every day. And what's that watch that I would get? Well, as you know, guys, um, I do like my independence, right? I really, really do like my independence. And the one that I would recommend is the, the H. Moser Pioneer. I recommended this as well to Tony Nico. I think these banker buck are really phenomenal watches. They're watches that can be dressed down if you put on rubber, dressed up if you put it on leather. Uh, so I think they're just great watches to wear every day. And, and ultimately, they're super versatile. And you get a watch that is truly unique, made by a, an independent watch brand. It, it is expensive, right? For most people, it is expensive. But, you know, we are talking about quite an expensive collection as well. So it's not like you're missing out on the means to get, you know, kind of a steel Moser. I think these are bang per buck. 
amazing discounts on the secondary market. I mean, the value you get is phenomenal, especially considering that H. Moser is an amazing brand. You get a ton of hand finishing, you get a ton of design, you get a ton of uh, beautiful artistry. Personally, I would go with the blue dial. I really like the blue dial. The green one and red one are also nice, but they're just a little bit loud. I can feel like from your collection, you do have more subdued taste. And the blue one is a little bit darker and it's kind of fume fade. So it will look almost like it's black in certain lights. So I think that is definitely the one to get. So those are my recommendations. Those are my four recommendations. And again, there is one on the wrist. Now you did mention uh, you're not sure about the root beer because you're afraid that the polished center links, uh, especially the gold center links, would get scratched very easily. Well, my thought is, because you do wear the Explorer 1 and the Bruce Wayne most often, my thought is, well, why not get the root beer anyways and just kind of wear it as more of a weekend type of watch rather than an everyday watch, you know? That is quite a special watch. I think it's one of the better looking uh, Rolex watches maybe the nicest GMT outside the Bruce Wayne because I like the Bruce Wayne the best, but I think it's a beautiful watch. It's definitely stunning. And if you can get it, I think it really is a no brainer to add to the collection. I wouldn't be worried about scratching the center links. Just wear it, enjoy it and, and, and use it, you know, because at the end of the day, what are these watches good for if they're just sitting in a box, right? You got to wear these things. You got to enjoy these things. And uh, yeah, I think th those are my recommendations. I think it would really shape up your collection nicely. I think the Zenith would ultimately complete that sub collection of iconic chronographs in your collection i think adding a rose gold uh white dial day date would kind of scratch that itch but it's also a beautiful uh beautiful day date i really do like that one a lot i think adding a dedicated dress watch either from pradic from breguet from lange i think th that's a no-brainer at the end of the day these are special watches you need a watch that is really really special and that encapsulates kind of your taste and that you can wear on these special occasions so I think getting a dedicated dress watch is a no-brainer. I would love to see you add an independent watch because, guys, I love my independence. I think the H. Moser Pioneer is as good is as good as it gets, bang per buck value-wise, and it is super versatile. Again, you can dress it up, you can dress it down. And last but not least, I would add the root beer. I think it's a no-brainer. I think, really, uh, you'll really fall in love with that watch. It is truly gorgeous. So, guys, those are my recommendations. Let me know down in the comments what you think. I'd love to get your feedback. Of course, feel free to provide some suggestions of your own. As always, guys, I would invite you kindly to like the video, to subscribe for more videos in the future. Guys, my name is Marco. I'm your Watch Cardinal, and I'll see you guys in the next one.